Radio, Shores Radio. This music brings healing, brings joy and light to the deepest. Oh, gotta keep on listening. Shores Radio. Glory to God. Good evening. This is the Christian Family and Choice Radio 92.9 FM. Your life, your salvation, your choice. <laughs> Inviting you to get somebody to write with and somebody to write on. Let us pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, once again, we can come to your throne of grace just to exhort you, to glorify you, to magnify you, to give you all the praises and the honor because all of it belongs to you. But Father, on tonight, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you for all of your faithful listeners, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all those who want to know more and more about you, Father God, and your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, that you said you will always make a way. So we thank you for 92.9, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. So people could hear, not only here, but in the north, the east, and the west countries, Father God, that they can hear about this man called Jesus who gave up his life, oh God. We thank you that we can have a life and life more abundantly. We thank you for the man of God tonight, Lord God. We thank you for the anointing that's upon his life, Lord God. We thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge that you have given him, oh God. We thank you, Lord God. We ask you on tonight, Lord God, that you open up every deaf ear, oh God, that they will be able to hear what it is that you're trying to say. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, O God. But most of all, Lord God, we thank you for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you, Lord God, for the tribe of Judah, O God. We thank you for Elion, the God of most high. We thank you for the Prince of peace, O God. We thank you. We thank you for your word that sharpened it in the two hedges swore, Father God. We just thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We love you on tonight. And we magnify just you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Glory to God. God is still a good God. And the good thing about God being good, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank God for the Apostle Paul writing to his son in the faith. He time to study to show himself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. Timothy, from a child, that was known the Holy Scripture. The early Christian, the Berean Christian, they searched the Scriptures out daily to see if these things were so. And we thank God for his word and what he's doing. In our lives, we thank him for faith that come by hearing and by hearing and by hearing and by hearing and by hearing. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's see what God is saying to us in his words tonight. Let's turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 20. Solomon is given credit for writing this, but whoever name put behind it is the Holy Ghost, because the Bible says, holy men of God spake, as the Spirit of God was upon them. So Solomon is given credit here, but the Holy Ghost is behind it. He's the author of this book. So let's hear what he's saying to us here and start this reading from the Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah! Same was in the beginning was God. When we look at the Word, we look at God. Hallelujah! Him and His Word is the same like the wet and the water. Amen? Hallelujah! Glory to God! Jesus is still Lord. Glory to God! Proverbs chapter 20 and look at one verse in Proverbs chapter 20 Look at the first verse, Proverbs chapter 20, and look at verse 1. Proverbs chapter 20, look at verse 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Now Solomon has a lot of wisdom and he's saying that to us, so he have to know something. Remember, he has quite a reputation. He had 700 wives and princesses. And 300 concubines. So he had quite a bit of people from that side. So he knows something about this drinking. And we're going to look at something here, what we have to see. And we put a title to this in a little while. We didn't put a title yet. But look at what he's saying. Wine is a mucker. That word there, mucker, means an imposter. It appeared to be one thing, but it's something else. Wine is a mucker. Strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So it will deceive you. Can you see that? Look at that verse again. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 1. Look at that one verse. Wine is, 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 look at the tense he used. Wine is a mocker. 
Strong drink is rage, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Look at something in Proverbs 31. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 31. And let's pick it about the fourth verse. Get something to write with and something to write on. Proverbs chapter 31. And look at the fourth verse. It is not for kings or Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Let their drink and forget the law and pervert judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drinks unto him that is ready to perish and wines to those who have a heavy heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at those verses. You're going to read it again. Nobody says he's talking about me. Amen. Look at those verses again. What is that of Solomon saying this? Wine is a marker. Wine, that word marker, I mean an imposter. I tell you it's something, but it's something else. Look at that. Look at the fourth verse. It is not for kings, or Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for the princes strong drink. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto him that have a heavy heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. It's not going anywhere. You can drink as much as you want. It's not going anywhere. When you're sober up, it's right here. Let's go back and see how this started, and see why Solomon is saying this. He pick up this. The word of God have to be the word of God, have to be the word of God. Go back to Genesis chapter 9. Hallelujah. Genesis Chapter 9. And see what God is saying to us there. Genesis chapter 9. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Genesis chapter 9. And let's pick up by the 20th verse. Genesis chapter 9. And let's pick up by the 20th verse. Noah began to be an husband man and planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. Look at the 23rd verse. And Shem and Japheth took garment, and laid upon their shoulders, and went backward, and covered the nakedness of their fathers. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah woke out of his wine, and knew, what his, knew not what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Cain, and the servant of servants shall be unto thy brethren. Now we see something there in that reading. We're going to read it again and see something. Solomon started by saying, Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever drink it going to be deceived. Look at that 28. Noah began to be a husband and planted a vineyard. And he drank the wine and was drunken. And he drank the wine and was drunken. And he drank the wine and was drunken. And was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took garment and laid upon their shoulders, and they went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. Noah woke out of his wine, and knew what his younger son had done unto him. What he had done unto him. What do you think he done unto him? Because of drinking. Don't drink. Look at something else. Genesis 19. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 19. Get something to write with and something to write on. And see what God is saying to us in His holy, written, precious words. Now, let's give a little background on this. God is going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of the wickedness of the people there. So the drag lot out and his wife and his two daughters, she looked back, the wife looked back and become a pillar of salt, but the two daughters was taken away with their father, Lot. And in their mind, they were the only ones that survived. Everybody else in the world was destroyed. But Lot was with his two daughters, and look at this reading here, all because of drinking. Genesis chapter 19. Let's pick it up at the 30th verse. Genesis chapter 19. And let's pick it up. And the 30th verse. And Lot went out of Zohar and dwelt in the mountains, and his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zohar, 
and he dwelt in a cave and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come unto us after the man of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine. Let our father drink wine. Let our father drink wine. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we'll lie with him, and we'll preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night. The firstborn went in and lay with our father, and he perceived not when he lay down, now, when he arose, that is some kind of drunk. He doesn't know when he went to bed or when he get up. Verse 34, And came to pass on tomorrow, that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesterday night with my father. Let us make my father drink wine this night also, and going, and you going, and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him, and he perceived not that he lay down, nor he arose. And the two daughters of Lot were with child by their father, all because of drinking, incest. The firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab, the same as the father of the Moabite unto this day. And the younger also bare a son and called his name ben the same as the children of the Ammonite unto this day. We have to read those verses again. I said we have to read those verses again. All because of, uh, we'll start off by what Solomon said. Wine is a mocker. Wine is a mocker. We saw the dangers, let him that be able to perish, let him drink wine. And he went to bed with daughter that drunk, that he didn't know that he went to bed with his first daughter, neither his second daughter. And both of them were pregnant by the father. How you like that? Drinking. Look at this. Let's read those verses again. Get something to write with and something to write on. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 19. Something else. Drinking. Way back then. Noah began to be an husband man, drunk, and he get drunk, and he didn't even know what he was doing. His younger son had an affair with his father. See where that started? Way up there, all because of drinking. Hallelujah. Genesis 19, verse 30, A lot went out of Zohar and dwelt in the mountain, and his two daughters were with him, for he feared to dwell in Zohar, for he dwelt in a cave with his two daughters. The firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old. And there's a man in the earth to come unto us after the man of all the earth. Notice the father is old, but it didn't prevent him from having an affair with his daughter. Drunk, that drunk. The firstborn said to the younger, our father is old. There is not a man in the earth to come unto us after the man of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we'll be with him, and we will preserve seed of our father. And, the, and, and they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with the father. And he perceived not that he lay down, nor when he arose. Quite a drunk child conceived in that kind of environment. We to look at the children come out of that, the Moabites and the Ammonites, what kind of mess it is because of that conception. Verse 34, And it came to pass on tomorrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesterday night with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and going down and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And he made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger rose and lay with, her, with him, and he perceived not that he lay down, nor when he rose. And the both daughters of Lot were with child by their father. The firstborn bare his son and called his name Moab, the same as the father of Moabite unto this day. And the younger also bare his son and called his name Benami, the same as the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. Drinking. Look at the book of Hosea. Hosea chapter 4. And see what God is saying there. Get something to write with and something to write on. Hosea chapter 4. How many children were conceived in this kind of environment? And the mess that we have today, visiting the iniquities of the fathers down to the third and fourth generation. We're going to look at that in the process of time. Hosea chapter 4. Look at the 11th verse. Look at the 11th verse. Hosea. Chapter 4, look at verse 11. Hold them and wine, and new wine take away the heart. Whenever you drinking, you have no heart for your children, for your wife, for your children, for your husband. Drinking. Hold them and wine, and new wine take away the heart. Very, very serious. Look at that verse. Hold them and wine, and new wine take away the heart. We had many, many, many instances of this in the ministry. 
drinking or using drugs, all of them is the same family, all of them are first cousins. One is better than the other, all of them is bad. Hold them and wine, and new wine, take away the heart. Habakkuk, H-A-B-A-K-K-U-K, Habakkuk. And as a Christian, all of us came from that world out there, and we were delivered from two. Habakkuk, H-A-B-A-K-K-U-K. Habakkuk chapter 2. All is bad. Habakkuk chapter 2. Put your finger on the 15 verse. Habakkuk chapter 2. Put your finger on the 15 verse. Warn to him that give it his neighbor drink. And put it bottle to him and make him drunken also, that thou may look upon their nakedness. You know what he's saying there? Get him drunk so he could have sex with him. Well, we saw that drunken with Lot and his daughters. You know that word woe? That word woe? How many people were raped because of drinking? How many people get themselves in all because of drinking? Woe. Disaster, catastro catastrophe, danger awaits your woe. Unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that he may put a bottle to him, and make it him drunken, also that he may look upon their nakedness. Bad. Now, we have two kingdoms, a kingdom of light and a kingdom of darkness. Those are the things that happen in the kingdom of darkness. And don't blame God for this. Let's go back to Genesis 1. And see what God is saying there. Genesis chapter 1. You have to see this thing and write it down. You have something to write with and something to write on. Glory to God. Genesis chapter 1. Behind the drug scene. What's behind it? Who is behind it? How did it all start? It? Genesis chapter 1. And look at the 31st verse. Genesis chapter 1, look at verse 31. God saw everything that he made. Behold, it was very good. The evening and the morning, the sixth day. God didn't make anything bad. Everything God made was good. The thief come not but to steal, to kill and to destroy. Everything God made was good. Look at that 31st verse. Want to see it and write it down? Because faith cometh by hearing, by hearing, by hearing, by hearing, by hearing. Look at that 31st verse. God saw everything that he made. Behold, look, everything I made. Very good. Every good and perfect gift come down from God. And no variableness or shadow of turning. James 1.17. Every good and perfect gift come from God. Look at that. God saw that everything he made. Behold, it was very good. Look at the book of Ezekiel. Even Satan. How could a good God make a bad devil? God didn't make a bad devil. God make everything good. Can you read? Look at Ezekiel 28. Everything God made was good. But God give you a will. And he's not going to violate your will. You have a free will. You can go up or down. I've said before you, blessing and cursing. Blessing if you do this and curse if you do that. Ezekiel 20, look what he said about Satan. See, everything God made was good. And if we follow a good God, we'll be good. If we follow a bad devil, you'll be bad. Ezekiel 20, look what he's saying about Satan. Let's pick it up. At the 11th verse, get something to write with and something to write on. Everything God made was very good. God didn't make drunkenness and alcohol, beverages and so on. Oh, we'll see that in a while. Behind the drug scene. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 28. Just pick it up at the 11th verse. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus said the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty, perfect in beauty, perfect in beauty. Thou was thou hast been in the garden, 
of God, every precious stone was thy covering, the topaz and the diamond and the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold, the workmanship of that tribe were prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covered, I have set thee so. Thou was on the holy mountain of God, thou was walk up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, thou was perfect. Thou was perfect, speaking about Satan. Thou was perfect. Thou was perfect in the way the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee. God didn't make a bad devil. Everything God made was very good. Look at that 15 verse. But thou was perfect in the way from the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, thou was filled the midst of thee with violence. Thou was sinned, therefore I'll cast thee out of profane out of the mountain of God. I'll destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Can you read? The heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. We're going to read those verses again. Everything God made was very good. Everything God made was very good. Let's go back up to the 11 verse again. How could a good God make a bad devil? How could a good God make a bad hell? Well, he didn't make hell for you. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. You behaving bad, so you're going to stay there with the devil and his angels. He don't want you to go there. It wasn't made for you. It was made for the devil and his angels. You want to be bad, well, then you're going to be with the devil and his angels. Look at those verses again. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus said the Lord God, thou sealest of the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden. But when we the third chapter of Genesis, we saw who was in Eden. Satan was there, the garden of God, every precious stone was thy covering, the saddest, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold, the workmanship of the tower were prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub, cherub is short for cherubim, Satan is an angel that covered it. I have said thee so, thou hast been the holy mountain of God, thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, thou was perfect, thou was perfect in a way from the day that thou was created until... That was perfect until, that was perfect until iniquity was found in thee. The book of Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes. Look what God said. Get something to write with and something to write with. Look what God said. The book of Ecclesiastes. Everything God made was very good. Where did that come from? Well, let's see what God had to say to us in his word. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. I'll look at one verse. Look at the 25th verse. Put your finger on the 25th verse. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Je uh, Ecclesiastes 7. Look at verse 25. Lo, this lonely I have found that God had made man upright, but Put your finger on but. But they have sought out many inventions. See that? You have a will. It's not my will that any should perish. All will come to know me. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane say, Father, it's not my will, but thy will. Look at that verse. Lo, this only have I found that God had made man upright. You see, he made Satan perfect in beauty. Until iniquity was found in him, he has a will. He has a will. Lord, this only have found that God had made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. They have sought out many inventions. Let's come a little closer to home and see what he said. Look at Romans chapter 1. Don't you blame my heavenly father for your mess. That's the devil. Oh, we saw that mess there. That couldn't be God. That couldn't be God. There is God with a small g. Romans chapter 1. And let's see a few things here why all these things happen. Paul is given credit for writing this to the believers at Rome. And let's see what he's saying here in his holy, written, precious words. Romans chapter 1, look at the 18 verse. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. 
because that will be known of God is manifested in them, for God had showed it unto them. For the invisible thing from the creation of the world are clearly seen there without, they are being understood by the things that are made, even the eternal power and Godhead there without excuse. Because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but they became vain in their imagination and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, who changed the glory of the uncorruptible God in the image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God gave them up unto uncleanness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, which is blessed forevermore. Amen. For this cause God gave them over to vile affection, him the woman did change the natural use of that which is against nature. Likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burning their lust one towards another, men with men working that which is unseemly, receiving to themselves the recompense of the error which was meat. Even as they didn't like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being full with all unrighteousness and fornication, wickedness and covetousness, maliciousness full of envy and murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers and backbiters, haters of God, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, inventors of evil things, inventors of evil things. Can you read? Inventors of evil things, uh, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God are they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only they do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. Can you see that? Everything God made was very good. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? Look at the book of Luke. Don't drink. The book of Luke. And God says something here. <clears throat> now, if we could look at this thing here, God gives some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. He said them in the church first apostles. Well, they're the highest ministry gifts. And he said something here. If we can pick up and if we read, we'd know what to do and what not to do. Luke chapter 1, and this is the parents of John the Baptist. Some may want to know why these people were successful in their ministry. Well, we're going to see why. Don't drink. Everything God made was very good. God made man upright. Made certain, certain was perfect in beauty in the day he was created until Luke chapter 1. And let's pick it up at the fifth verse. Luke chapter 1. Let's pick it up at the fifth verse. Get something to write with and something to write on. And see what the Bible tells us. If we listen to some of these things, we don't know it all. We know in part and we prophesy in part. We see to our If you listen to some of these things, we'll have better people. You want to know where did children get these things from? Well, we'll see where they get it from. Luke chapter 1. Let's pick it up the fifth verse. There was in the days of Herod the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They both were righteous before God, walking in the commandments and the ordinance of the Lord. You know what is born was righteous? People wasn't even saved yet, but they was given credit for being righteous. That telling you something. When some of you go to stand before God, you want to talk to some of you. Christians are going before the judgment seat of Christ. They wasn't even saved. But they give look at that one more time. Take some time and read it. Chew on it for a while. Yeah? Go back to verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abel, and his wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They both were righteous. They both were righteous before God, walking the commandments with an S, and the ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child because Elizabeth was barren. They both were well stricken in years. And they came to pass while he executed the priest's office before God in his order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went in unto the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. And Zacharias saw him and was troubled, and fear fell upon him. The angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayers is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Thou shalt, look at that, thou shalt have great gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of God, and he shall drink, shall drink, you shall drink, you shall drink, 
You want the child to be great in the sight of the Lord? Look at this. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be full with the Holy Ghost in from his mother womb, and many of the children of Israel shall return to the Lord their God. You see why? Even before she didn't conceive yet, but he said, don't drink. How many times they arrest people for drunk driving and they check the alcohol level in the blood? Don't drink it, get into the blood, go and pass on to the children. Don't drink. Look at what he said. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall neither drink wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother. Oh, God won the first time from the Holy Ghost, but you're drunk. In your system, have alcohol beverages. Can you see that? Don't do that because you're going to have this. Look at the book of Numbers. Let's go there for a while and come back. Numbers chapter 6. Unless what God is saying to us in his holy, written, Precious words. If we would read some of these things and take some time and read and see what God is saying to us in His holy written precious words. Numbers chapter 6. Let's pick it up at verse 1. See where they get it from. We're going to see it even coming in the new covenant. We're going way back up to see where they are. If you are Christian, save, born again have been born from above, how could you do this? He said this to Elizabeth. Notice they both were righteous. Notice, look at the facet right before we look at, listen to this. Listen, just listen. Show on this for a while. They both were righteous before God and he telling them, don't drink. So you could be righteous before God and drink. You can bring forth a child. They're both righteous before God, walking all the commandments, but the angel come all the way from heaven to them, don't drink. No wine, no strong drink, don't drink. Both of them righteous, think about that. Both of them righteous before God. Walking all the commandments and ordinances, all of it, don't drink. Well, you see, there are people who walk in all the commandments and they're drinking. Because if they did not drink, you wouldn't have to put that in there. Huh? Don't drink. I think it's sometimes it's humorous to think about it. The Bible says, husband, love your wives. You think that would be just natural? Husband, love your wives. Wife, reverence your husband. Yeah, because you see, there's some husbands don't love their wives. Husbands love your wives. They say, they walk in righteous, bore them before God, righteous, all the commandments. <laughs> Yet he tell them, don't drink. When they went to look for um, some de deacons to help the apostles, they say, look for seven men. Number one, honest report. Number two, follow the Holy Ghost. Number three, wisdom. How are you like that? You see, everybody don't got it. You have to have these three qualities to be selected. Go to the multitude, and among the, from the among, the among the multitude, look for this. Number one, a good report. So there's a lot of people follow the Holy Ghost and wisdom, but they don't have a good report. Some people follow the Holy Ghost and have a good report, but they have no wisdom. So we want, number one, I always thought the Holy Ghost should be first. Uh -uh. Good report, follow the Holy Ghost, wisdom. Yeah, they bought them righteous before God, don't drink. Numbers chapter 6, speaking about verse 1. And the Lord speak unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto the Lord, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar or wine, vinegar of wine, or vinegar of strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat any moist grapes that are dry, all the days of his separation, that eating nothing that is made of the vine threes, from the kennel even to the husk. We have to read those verses again. Well, you see, all of us should be separated unto the Lord. We are peculiar people. We are royal priesthood. We are holy nation. All of us should be separated from doing this. That should be just natural as a Christian. No, these folks were not saved. They were servants. They operate in two cylinders, soul and body. We have three cylinders, spirit, soul, and body. Let's read that again. Get something to write, something to write on. You wonder why the children born? We had a ministry here in Brooklyn, one of the major uh, hospitals here. Ministering to children born addicted. Ministering to children born with AIDS. Never had sex, never used drugs, but they have AIDS. Children born addicted to alcohol. Children born addicted to drugs. How you like born that way? Just out of the mother womb, born addicted. 
How you like that? Look what he said. Now these are under the old covenant, we are under the new covenant. Look at it. The Lord speak unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the throne of Israel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of in as right, to separate themselves unto the Lord, they shall separate themselves from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink, neither shall they drink any liquor of grapes or any moist grapes of the dry, all the days of the separation, and so on, and so on, and so forth. Can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Look at the book of Judges. Judges chapter 1, and look at Hannah praying for a child. She was barren, couldn't get pregnant, and she went to church praying. Notice where she went? To church. Hallelujah. I want this child to be the Lord's child. So I'm going to church. And she's going to pray for this child. But look at this. Look at this. First Samuel chapter 1. <clears throat> Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 1. Let's pick it up at the 11th verse. And she vowed a vow. Remember what we just saw a while ago? If you vow a vow. And said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look upon the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me, and forget not thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. I shall come to pass. She continued praying before the Lord. Eli marked him out. Hannah speak in her heart only, and her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought that she had been drunken. Eli said unto her, How long will the Lord be drunken? Put away the wine from thee. Put away the wine from thee. Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have neither drink wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my heart before the Lord. I didn't drink any wine or any strong drink. Go and feed the Lord for a drive. No wine or strong drink, not in this body. No wine or strong drink. The Lord, conquer not thy handmaid, the daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint, grief thereof, I speak hitherto. Eli answered and said, Go in peace, the God of Israel granted thy petition with her. I wonder if she was drunk, if she would grant her that request. Mm -hmm. I wonder if she had alcohol in her system, if she if she answered that request. I wonder. Because before Hannah get pregnant, before Elizabeth get pregnant, they say that you're not going to drink any wine or strong drink. This child will be full of the Holy Ghost from his mother womb. And something about that story there with Samuel. He was just a child. And God speak to him. He heard a voice calling Samuel. Samuel. And he thought Eli was calling. He went to Eli's room. Eli said, I didn't call you. He went back again to his room. Samuel. Samuel, he went to Eli, you called me, Eli said, I didn't call it three times. Eli said, no, God is speaking to you. I think about that age, but look at the mother. I drink neither wine nor strong drink. I drink neither wine nor strong drink. I drink neither wine nor strong drink. Telling John the Baptist parents that don't drink any wine or any strong drink, even before she get pregnant. Don't drink it. This child is not going to be born addicted to anything. Can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Look at Samson's parents. The book of Judges. Look at Samson's parents. Judges chapter 13. We could learn behind the drug scene why all this problem with drugs? Why are our children using drugs? Where did they get it from? Judges chapter 13. And see what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious word. Judges 13, now look at this. All these are lessons, types and shadows for us. I don't know why. Well, why? Look why. Judges chapter 13, pick it up at verse 1. And the throne of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them out, delivered them into the hands of the Philistine forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danite, whose name was Manor, and his wife was barren, and bare not. The angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not, nor drink not, nor... You see, if he, listen to this. Now therefore... I pray thee, drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat any unclean thing. 
For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head, and the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from his womb, and shall he begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistine. Well, you see, if you want to deliver Israel from what you, you can't born contaminated. So she's not even pregnant yet, but tell them what to do. If this child going to be a deliverer, going to deliver us out of the hands of the Philistine, you better don't drink anything. And maybe that's why your children are not deliverers. They've been held captive or hostage by the enemy. We're going to read those verses again. She's not even pregnant yet, just like Elizabeth. Not even pregnant yet. Don't drink any wine or strongly. This child will be full of the Holy Ghost from the mother womb. And that's why some kids can't be full of the Holy That's why. Make sure you drink no wine or strong drink. You see Hannah praying for a child. Yeah, you make sure you don't drink. She says, oh, I didn't drink any wine or strong drink. I'm praying unto the Lord. God grant you the request. Maybe that's why he's not granting you no request, because there's maybe alcohol in your system. Look at it. And there was a certain man, verse 2, of the Zorah of the family of the Danite, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. The angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt, thou shalt, shalt in the future conceive and bear a son. But now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. The child shall be a Nazarite. Unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistine. Ooh. Let's come a little closer to home. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And see what you're playing with. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Get something to write with and something to write on. I wish somebody has told us these things much earlier in life, or which we had somebody with some sense. Come and give us some information. We'd be better people off today. Our children are born contaminated. And we know why, why, why. Everything God made was very good. It's not God. God did that. No, it's not God. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 5. Ah, First Corinthians chapter 5. Let's pick it up at the ninth verse. First Corinthians Chapter 5, let's pick it up at the 9th verse. I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators, not to company with fornicators, not to company with fornicators, yet all together with fornicators of this world, nor of covertious, nor extortioners, nor of idolaters, nor for them must be need to go out of the world. Now I have written unto you, and not to keep company with any man that called to call a brother, be a fornicator, a covertious, or an idolater, a railer, a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such a one not to eat. Or what I have to do unto the judge, and them that were without to do to judge them that are within, and them that are without, God shall judge, therefore put away from among you, from them that wicked, that wicked, that wicked, that wicked, that wicked person. We have to read those verses again. Keep no company. Look at it. Can you read? I didn't write this, I made it there. My name doesn't appear there. I wrote unto you in, the, in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, nor of the covertious or extortioners of the idolaters, or them that must need go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man be called a brother, be a fornicator. If any man be called a brother, be a fornicator. Not to company. Look at, look at verse 11. Now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man be called a brother, be a fornicator, to be, or covertious, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or extortioner, with such ha not to eat. Huh? For what have I to do to judge them that also that are without, and not to judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judge it. Therefore, put away from among you yourself that wicked person. First Corinthians chapter 6, go over to the 6th chapter. First Corinthians chapter 6. Look at verses 9 and verses 10. Look at verses 9 and 10. God is still a good God and we thank him for his holy written precious word. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 6, look at verses 9 and 10. Get something to write with, something to write on. Look at those two verses. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covertious, nor drunkards, 
no revilers, no extortioners shall not uh, the extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. They're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. We have to read those verses again. See, all they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. You see why? You see why some people couldn't get in? Can you read? We're going to read those verses again. This is the new covenant. We have a better covenant established upon better promises. We're going to read that again. So why they can't enter the kingdom? Can't inherit the kingdom of God. There's something left you can't get it. Don't drink any strong wheat. This child will be full of the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Don't drink. Look at it. Nine. Know you not that unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Are you unrighteous? Be you not deceived thereby fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That is something. That is something. You want to know why some people couldn't get in? Look at Look at that. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And look at this. Get something to write with or something to write. Look at this. This is something. This comes from the old covenant. They bring it over here. The new covenant for us to show us something here. Because. How serious is. Why? There have to be a reason why. We look at it, God is a good God. Everything God made was very good. Even Satan, when he created him, was perfect. But man invented evil. Why children born are dead? Why they born sick? Why they born with all these different sickness and diseases? Why? How to be a reason why? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And let's pick it by the fifth verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's pick it up with the fifth verse and see what God is saying. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our example to the intent that we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be your idolaters, as some of them, as is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornications, as some of them did to commit committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them did tempt it, and would destroy the serpent. Neither you be murmurers, as some of them were also murmurers, and they would destroy the destroyer. Now all these happen unto them for an example that is written for our admonition, upon whom the end of the world have come. We have to read those verses again. We have to read those verses again. Look at how many in one day because of that drinking wild partying and crazy acting crazy. And drinking how to be involved in it. No, many of them God was not well pleased with for they overthrown them in the wilderness. Verse 5, verse 6. These things were an example to the end that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither you be idolaters of some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink. So they don't to eat and to drink. They don't to eat and to drink. So they don't to eat and to drink. And they rose up to play. Ah, uh, rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication of some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. One day. Yeah, eat and drink and went up to play. Hallelujah. Remember Job children? Everybody party and party and party. Job said, maybe my children are sin and curse God in his heart. Maybe why all these things happen. Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. God is a good God. And we thank him for his holy, written, precious word. Galatians chapter 5. Is Galatians in the Bible? Yes, it is. Just want to make sure we're in the B-I-B. L-E. L-E. While I'm cooking, I'm eating. Galatians chapter 5. Look at these things. These things are put there and you have Christians. You know, we are to be leaders. The Burian Christians search the scriptures out daily to see if these things were so. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5. Let's pick it up at the 19 verse. The work of the flesh. The work of the flesh. 
the work of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, sedition, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, 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 huh? drunkenness and reveling, and such the like which I tell you before, as I told you in time past, they always do such things. Shh, 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 shh. What happened to those folks? It seems to say the same thing in, in the book of Cor Corinthians. They always do something, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. We have to read those verses again. You see why some people don't get it? They're playing, just playing the games and wondering why. What's wrong with God? Why couldn't I get my prayer answer? Why does it happen? Why the healing wouldn't come? Why the money wouldn't come? Why the husband wouldn't come? Why do why come? Well, there's some things you have to do. You have to clean your house out. Look at it. Now the work of the flesh are manifest which are these. Idolatry, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envying, murder, drunkenness, drunkenness and reveling, Notice drunken and then party after. You drink then they start partying. Same thing we saw a while ago. Three and twenty thousand in one day. Rose up to eat and to, to drink and to play. Remember that? And reveling. Such a like which I tell you before. I have also told you in time past. They which do such things. T-H-I-N-G-S. Things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. There is inheritance left for you. You can't get it. There is inheritance left for you. You cannot get it. Huh? Can't get it. Drunkenness and reveling. Can't get it. Christians. Christians. The book of Ephesians. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5. Get somebody to write with and somebody to write on and hear what God is saying to us in his holy written precious words. Ephesians chapter 5. Pick it up at the 18th verse. Look at the 18 verse. Ephesians chapter 5. Look at the 18 verse. Be not drunk with wine. Be not drunk with wine. Be not drunk with wine. How many scriptures we give you so far? How bad it is. Well, you know, when you and I read things like this, I'd always look back and say to say if everything that Jesus Christ did were put in the world, books, the world couldn't hold the books, and they leave that out to leave this in. They leave that out to leave this in. I said they leave that out to leave this in. How you like that? Look at it. Be not drunk with wine, wearing excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Verse 19, speaking to yourself in psalm and hymn and spiritual song, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have to read those verses again. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Be not drunk with wine. So wine could get you drunk. Wine could get you drunk and go through red light and rape people and have children molested and do all sort of crazy stuff. Wine could get you drunk. Be not drunk with wine. Wear in excess, but be filled with the spirit. See, they have a spirit on all that world, that conquer feet, that synthetic something. Get you drunk. And the things that God is something else. Look at the day of Pentecost. And they said these men were acting drunk on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> Acts chapter 2. And let's see what God is saying to us there. Acts chapter Look at the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2. Look at the day of Pentecost. Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine. I tell you, don't do that, but do this. Don't do that, but do this. Acts chapter 2, look at verse 5. Now they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews of devout men of every nation under the heaven. And when there was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these speak Galilean? How we every man who own tongue when we were born? Partitions and Medes, Elomite, dwellers of Mesopotamia, and Jury and Cappadocia. And Pontius of Asia, Phygon and Pamphylia in Egypt, parts of Libya about Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabian, we do hear them speaking our own tongue, the wonderful work we've done. And they all were amazed 
and were doubting, saying one to another, What mean is this? Look at verse 13. Look at the 13 verse. Put your finger on the 13 verse. <laughs> yeah, they were drunk, but it wasn't drunk as that other drunk out of the world. Huh? Look at verse 13. Others mocking, saying, These men are full of new wine. Peter standing up with the eleven, lift up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea and you that dwell of Jerusalem, be not known unto you and hook not to my words. These are not drunken as you suppose. They are drunk, but not as you suppose. They are drunk with the real wine, not with the synthetic wine that gets you drunk on the wood. Look at it. Look at it. For these are not drunk as you suppose, seen by the third hour of the day. This is that which is spoken of the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour my spirit, my spirit, my spirit. My spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see vision, and your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my servant, upon my handmaiden, I'll pour my spirit, poured in the days of my spirit, and you shall prophesy, and you shall see wonders in the heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord came. Verse 21. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. How you like that? See that? Can you see that? Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Let's go back to Ephesians. You see, they were drunk, but not as you suppose. They were drunk, but not as you suppose. Yeah, that drunk on the world. You know, look at something with Samson's strength and the madman of Gadara's strength. Both of them had exceedingly great strength. But Samson's strength was good strength. The man Magadera was destructive strength. You see, Samson did mighty things as our power. Lift up the gates of the city and do any mighty things and burst chains and all kinds of that, that, you know, that's something else. But the man Magadera cut himself with stone and I mean just, and I mean bursting chains of sun and all that. Destructive strength. I was as good strength. That's his bad strength. Like Jesus make wine, this is good wine. When the devil make it, that's bad wine. Huh? <laughs> let's, let's read that. And we say, well, Jesus drink wine. Jesus didn't drink any wine. And if he drink any wine, it's good wine. Every good and perfect gift come from God. Every good and perfect gift come from God. And no variable, no shadow. Turning. God is a good God. Big John chapter 2, Jesus drink wine. You want to look for an excuse to get drunk? Go get drunk if you want with the devil and his crowd. My Lord and Savior didn't drink no wine and get drunk. Hallelujah. Big John chapter 2. Jesus drink wine. He didn't drink any wine. Hallelujah. If he drink, he give it to you, it's good. Every good and perfect gift is from God. Hallelujah. Big John chapter 2. And let's read the story. Jesus drink wine. Liars. Big John chapter 2. Let's pick it up verse 1. In the third day there was a marriage at Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Both Jesus was called and disciple to the marriage. When they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto a woman, What have I to do with him? I always not yet come. He said, and his mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. And there were set six water pots of stone after the manner of purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pot up with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw it out and bear it unto the governor of the feast. And they did that. Now Jesus drink, just bear it on take it to the governor. He didn't drink it. He the governor. And when the ruler of the feast tasted the water that was made wine, he knew not from whence it was, but the servant which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called on the bridegroom. And he said unto him, Every man at the beginning do set forth. Good wine, and when men are well, are well drunk, they give that which is worse. But thou was kept the good wine. Thou was kept the good wine. So Jesus' wine is good wine. doesn't get you drunk. Can you see that? Look at verse 11. The beginning of God is not going to give you their nine spiritual gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, special faith, healing, miracles, discerning of spirit, prophecy, tongues, and, and these operate as the spirit will. The spirit is not going to give you miracles to make something that is destructive and kill people. I come that you may have life and have life more abundant. Then come that the devil come that you kill, steal, and destroy. So that's not our God and Savior. That's the devil and his crowd. Can you see that? Look at it. Look at the verse 9. And the rule of the feast tasted the water that was made wine and knew not what it was. The servant which drew the water knew. 
And the governor of the feast had called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at beginning set for the, the good wine, and when men as well drunk, who so that was worse, thou hast kept the good wine until now. This is the beginning of miracles that Jesus in Cana of Galilee manifested for his glory to his disciples, and they believe on him. Can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Behind the drug tree. Let's look at part two. Where all this coming from? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 21. And look what your crazy drinking could cause. The addict. Deuteronomy 21. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Deuteronomy 21. If they take that much time to tell you, don't drink this, don't put, drink any strong wine, because what could happen? It could pass on. Okay, where do these children get this from? Get it from somewhere. They get it from somewhere. Watch this. Deuteronomy 21. And see what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious words. Deuteronomy 21. And let's pick it up at the 18 verse. Deuteronomy 21. Let's pick it up at the 18 verse. If any man have a stubborn and rebellious son will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and when they are chasing him, he will not hook no to them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him on to the elders of the city, unto the gate of the place. And they shall lay in and they shall say unto the elders of the city, This our son is a stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Where did he get that from? Where did he get that from? Look at verse 21. And all the men of the city stoned him with stone, and he died. So shall they put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. We have to read those verses again. Where did he get that from? Wouldn't listen to mother, wouldn't listen to father. Is not the behavior of a drug addict. Where did he get it from? What did he get it from? He just born like that. Ah. Everything God made was very good. Every good and perfect gift come from above. And there's no shadow of turning, no, no variableness or shadow of turning. So if God doesn't give you something good and then change it to bad. Ah, look at it. Let's read those verses again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 21. Look at the 18th verse. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, you have those in your family? Are you talking about your child? How did he or she get like that? If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son would not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and when they have chased him, he would not hook no to them. They chased him, he would not hook no to them. Then the father and the mother lay hold on him and bring him on to the elders of the city, onto the gate of the place. And they shall say unto the elders, This our son is a stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunken. And all the men of the city, How many men of the city? All the men of the city shall stone him with stone that he die. So shall they put evil away from among you. And all Israel shall hear me. Notice they call it evil. Notice they call it evil. Huh? Hallelujah. Solomon, give us some information here. We want to, in 1 Kings. Now we're looking at this because God used him mightily, but look at Solomon's wisdom and look at, he's given us, we some stuff from things that he wrote. And see, God want to help you, if you would listen. The addict. Look at the parents, misbehaving and drinking. Sure, and get it from somebody. Sure, nobody born like that will, when we look at those who born like that because they get it from their parents. We minister to kids who are born addicted right here in the city. Hundreds of kids, thousands of kids born addicted because never used any drugs, never smoke or drink, never had sex, but they're born with AIDS and born addicted to different substances. Look at Solomon here. First Kings chapter 4. And look what God's saying about Solomon. And let's pick it up at the 29th verse. 
1 Kings chapter 4, let's pick it up at the 29 verse, behind the drug scene. Okay, 29 verse. And God gives Solomon wisdom and understanding exceedingly much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. Wow. Isn't that something? Solomon wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he, had, he was wiser than all men that he turned the Ezraite and Hermon and Calcor and Dada, the son of Mahal. His fame was in all nations round about. And he speak 3,000 proverbs, and his song were 1,005. And he speak of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that spring out of the walls. He speak also of the beasts and of the fowls and the creeping things and the fish. And he came also all the people, all the people, all the people to hear the wisdom of Solomon, all the kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. Isn't that something? Everybody come to hear from Solomon, but God give it to him. Can you see that? And he have some advice for us. If we would listen, Proverbs chapter 4. Now remember what God gave him, large of heart, is wisdom like the sand of the seashore, Solomon. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 4. Just read, listen to this. This is where you get it from. The beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 4. And let's pick it up at the 14th verse. Remember Solomon getting right of all this? Everybody come to hear from Solomon. Well, I'm telling you what Solomon is saying to you. The addict. How would a child become an addict, a drug addict? Proverbs chapter 4, look at verse 14. Enter not in the part of the wicked, Remember, we look at the wicked just now. Remember that? We look at the wicked. Who is wicked? Now go not in the way of the evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it. Pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. Look at the 17th verse. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. We have to read those verses again. We have to read those verses again. Look at that 17 verse. And they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Or whatever wine they're making get them crazy. Huh? Verse 40. Enter not in the path of the wicked, nor go not in the way of the evil men. Don't go the front. Don't follow them. Come out from among them. What right have light with darkness? Righteousness with unright. Children of God with children of God. Don't go there. Don't drink their drink. Don't smoke the smoke. Don't do their stuff. Move from them. Don't go there. If there's more darkness there than light, darkness is going to win. It's easier to go downhill than to go up a mountain. Move from there. Enter not in the path of the wicked. Go not in the way of the evil man. Avoid. Pass. Not by it. Turn from it. Pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Can you read? Proverbs chapter 17. Remember what we read about Solomon. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 17. Get something to write with and something to write on. Hallelujah. Nothing is as sad. Look at this here. Nothing is as sad to see your children on the street. I mean, just wasting away. Like Chilion and Malon. They mean something. Proverbs chapter 17. Look at the 21st verse. That is sad. Remember everything God made was good. Man invented the evil way. Remember that. Keep that before you all the time. It's not God. He that begot it, a fool do it to his sorrow. And the father of a fool have no joy. Isn't that something? Father of a fool have no joy. Children just wasting away their lives and drugs and just, just and it's just as a parent. With some kind of something inside of you, it hurts so much to see your kids. Look at it. He that begotten a fool do it to his. Uh, Notice, look at look at the reading. Listen to this. Chew on it for a while. Look at this. He that begotten a fool. He that begotten a fool. In other words, you did it. He that begotten a fool do it to his sorrow. 
your drinking, your smoking, your, 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 your life. Children born addicted to drugs. Children born deformed, blind, dumb, deaf. Because something you did. Something you did. He that begotten the fool good to his sorrow. And the father of a fool have no joy. Father of a fool have no joy. Go on to the 24th verse. Go to the 25th verse. Look at the 25th verse. The 25th verse. A foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her that bear him. Is not something. Is not something. And you can't turn it back. Only God could solve those problems. We have had zillions of those problems and God solved it. All you name the drugs, we had it. You name the drugs we had to deal with. You name it, I'll whistle. Any drug you can call, we had to deal with it. Only God could solve that problem. Those are sort of facilities they have to put them there. They, they can't solve the problem. They try. They can't solve. Look at it. A foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her to bear him. That is sad to see your children on drugs and you try everything and you said it get better, get worse. Only God could solve it. Only God could solve it. And Proverbs 23. Remember what we read about Solomon? He have some information. Proverbs 23. Get something to write with and something to write on and see what God is saying to us in His holy, Bring written, precious, precious words. words. Hallelujah. This well-known evangelist, some years I have this on my file somewhere in my office. I adopted this child. This child was just a few days old. A week old or so, she adopted this child from some people that she knew. And the child, I mean, they have no alcohol, nothing like that in their house at all. Child grow up, become 10, 12 years old, become an alcohol, go to school and just drunk in the school all the time. Wait up, did some research and go back and check on the family. They were alcoholics. So visiting iniquities of the parents down to the third and fourth generation. Come from somewhere. They come from somewhere. Hallelujah. Proverbs 23. Look at verses 20. And 21. Look at those two verses. Proverbs 23. Remember what we read about Solomon. Largeness of heart. Wisdom like the sand and the seashore. Remember that? Keep that before you. Proverbs 23. Look at 20. And 21. Be not among wine bibbers, among righteous Jesus of flesh. For a drunkard and a glutton shall come to poverty. And the drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. You see that on our streets here in the city? You see that on our city? Lost everything. Lost job, apartment, family, everything. Because of drugs. Pitiful. That's how I get started in the ministry. I came to this city and I saw that and I said I'm going to do something about it. And I did something about it. And I'm doing something about it. The word that I give you tonight, now this could set you free. But let me say this. Medicine is not going to do any good until you take it, whether it's spiritual or natural medicine. If you don't take it, it's not going to work. We had all kinds of people to deal with. Strung up on drugs, some of them on drugs, and the teenagers going to school on drugs. 20, 30 years, and you name the drug, they use it. And God set them free. Behind the drug scene, who's behind it? Hallelujah. Look at those two verses. Be not among wine bibbers and among righteous eaters of flesh, for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. How many can say amen to that? Shall come to poverty. Shall come to poverty and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Solomon writing that. Can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Go a little Lord on in that same chapter. Proverbs 23. This is something. Our children. You see, when the children of Israel sin, Nehemiah didn't say they sin. He said, no, we sin. All of us guilty. He said, we sin. You see, we sin. All of us sin. Jeremiah said, we sin. <laughs> Not they sin. We. All of us sin. Those are our children. That's a reflection of us. We sin. They, they, those folks up there. No, no, no. Those folks, us. We miss it. Sin means miss the mark. Some of us miss it by half inch. Some of us miss it by a mile. You miss we didn't know my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Don't know. We didn't know. We didn't know. Thank God for his mercy. 
Proverbs 22. Let's pick up the 29 verse. Who have war? <laughs> Whenever you see that word war, what did it mean? Disaster, catastrophe, danger. Who had woes? Who had sorrows? You notice how it comes? Notice not a progression, but a regression. You notice that? <laughs> who has woes? Who has sorrow? Yeah, woes, sorrow. Yeah, sorrow. Who have contention? Who had babbling? Who had wounds without a cause? Who bang in your head? How did you get that fall? What did you get that scar on your face? Huh? Look at it. Babbling. Who had wounds without cause? Who had redness of eyes? Huh? They that tarry long at the wine, don't drink and drive. They that have gotten to seek mixed wine. Look not upon the, the wine when it is red, when it give it its color, when it give it its color in its cup, when it move its ever right. At the last, it bite it like a serpent and sting it like an adder. How many can say amen to that? You know what he's saying? That there's a lot of things they can say. You can drink, 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 and so on. But anybody who become a drug addict didn't become a drug addict in one day. You see, he started with one, pleasure, having fun on weekends. Then two, then having one during the week, and so on and on. And on. So it, you can look at it both ways. You can sit on the counter and drink, have so many drinks and get drunk. That's true. But I don't think it's just talking about this. You're talking about that gradual slide into it. Satan behind. Look at it. Look not upon, look at verse 31. Look not upon the wine when it is red, when it give it its color, when it's given its color in the cup, when it's moving itself, all right, move itself, you're drunk. At last, it bite it like a serpent and it sting it like an adder. You see, suddenly they taking one drink on weekend, then you're taking a wing during the week, then you're having more and more drink and more, and then you become, nobody starts smoking, become a chain smoker, but use one cigarette. They start with one. As the Chinese say, a journey of a thousand miles start with one step. You start with one drink, one smoke. Uh, but you don't know the count the cost. What's going to cost your children? What's going to cost you and your health later on? Trillions of dollars in the government because of your health, of smoking and drinking and all that. Think about it. It, it bite it like a serpent and sting it like that. Thy eyes shall behold strange women, and thy eyes shall utter, and look at her, and thy heart shall perverse, shall utter perverse things. Well, well, all these strange women you're going with, you could get some sexually transmitted disease because of drinking. Not only AIDS, but herpes and gonorrhea and syphilis and other things you can get because of drinking. And these things get you, but you can't get it out. You can't get it out. Till death does, only God could solve that. Only God could solve that. Thy eyes behold strange women, and thy heart out of perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that light in the midst of the sea, and thou that light on the top of a mass. They that have stricken me shall say unto me, I was not sick, and I have beaten me, and I felt it not. When I awake, I will seek it yet again. It seemed like that drug addict, an alcoholic. Get out of it, going right back. Can you see that? But it didn't start like that. It started with one drink or one smoke or one whatever it is, and just getting worse and worse and get out of control. Satan is behind it. Can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Proverbs 28. Remember what we wrote about Solomon? Read Solomon writing and see what he's saying. He's wisdom of like on the sand of the seashore. Hallelujah. Proverbs 28. Just these pieces. There's much more than this, but we couldn't put everything in here. But look at this. Proverbs 28. Look at the 24th verse. Somebody says he's talking about me again. Look at 24th verse. Whoso robbed his father or his mother and said, is no transgression, the same is the companion of a destroyer. The thief from your family, it's not a big thing, it's just my mother, it's my father. No, you break a divine law, thou shalt not steal. You break a divine law. What they steal, the worst people to save from is their parents. Huh? Look at it. Whoso robbed his father or his mother to maintain your drug habit, or your gambling habit, or whatever your habit is, said, it is no transgression. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The same is the companion of a destroyer. Write these things down and read it. Chew on it. Go to bed with it. Huh? Who saw Robert his father? Or his mother, the same said, is no transgression. The same is the companion of a destroyer. Can you read? Proverbs 29. Remember what we read about Solomon? 
be staying with Solomon for a little while because remember what God said about Solomon. Amen. Proverbs 29. Look at the third verse. Look at the third verse. Put your finger on the third verse. Proverbs 29. Look at the third verse. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots, he'll be broke. Ah, who say keep it company with harlot shall spend his substance. Spending money that you don't have, borrowing that you couldn't pay. Look at it. The third verse, whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keep it company with harlots spendeth his substance. Solomon could say amen to that. He had quite a bit of them. 300, 700 wives and princesses and 300 concubines. Look at something. Look at the prodigal son. Let's come a little closer to home. The prodigal son, Luke chapter 15. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's come a little closer to home. I have a ready edition. The head of the church is speaking. And the apostle Luke is recording. The prodigal son. And see if you see some parallel with your life. As we look at this young man. Hallelujah. This is the behavior of a drug addict. Addicted to some substance that take all your stuff away quickly. Uh, look at it. Luke chapter 15. Let's pick it up at the 11th verse. And he said a certain young man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father. Father give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And if I don't his living. Not many days after the younger son gathered all together and he took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with ratchet living. And when he had spent all, <laughs> when he had spent all, how many could say amen to that? Mm. Look at it. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want. You notice when his money finishes a famine? Mm -hmm. All the time he's a big spender, everything is fine. When his money finishes a famine? So he had so much money that he was keeping the entire community together because of his money. Everybody's spending his money. But once his money finished, there's large unemployment, there's recession, there's inflation, there's repossession, there's foreclosure because his money is a lot of money the father gave him. Can you see that? Spare all. Look at it. We have to read those verses again. I have a red light edition. The head of the church is speaking and Luke is recording. Huh? When it finishes a mighty famine, you've you been there? When you have money, everybody's your friend. You don't have no money. Yeah. Everybody numbers change. Everybody number disconnect. Nobody's returning your call. Yeah, you ain't got no more money. Look at it. A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said unto his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided unto them his living. Not many days after the younger son gathered together, gathered all together, and took his journey into a far country. Don't go far, stay near to home, because you may be spending that, that kind of spending, you're coming back home. You have to walk. And they wasted his substance to dry his living. When he had spent all, there arose a mighty family of land, and he began to be in want. And he went to join himself on the season of the country, and he sent him into the field to feed swine. That's a precipitous fall. That's a precipitous fall from living in this big house upstate, to living in Jamaica estate, now in a shelter, begging on the street. That's a precipitous fall. Uh, you don't have no cars, don't have your wife, don't have your children, don't have no more money, don't have a job. Huh? Look at verse 15. And he went and joined himself in the season of the country and they sent him into the field to feed swine. And he would have failed and filled his belly with a husk that the swine did eat and no man give on to him. How many can say amen to that? No man give on to him. Everybody now is broke because your money finished. There's a mighty famine. That's the behavior of a drug addict. And when they, look at that. And when he came to himself, everybody that we help in the ministry, they have to come to themselves. You, you have to come to yourself. If you don't come to yourself, you'll never get help. Mm -hmm. I said this before, medicine is not going to do any good until you take it. If you don't take it, it's not going to do any good. He came to himself. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants my father have bread enough to eat and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I'll arise and go to my father's house, and I'll say unto my father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and no more worthy be called thy son. Make me one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when his father yet the great way off, the father saw him, 
and had compassion on him and fell on his neck and kissed him and said unto him, and he said unto his father, I have sinned against heaven and, and in thy sight I am no more worthy to be called thy son. The father said unto him, thy, tell the servant, bring the father. You notice the father didn't answer to that? The father didn't answer that. But you notice something else? The father was always looking for his son. Even when you look at the parable with the rich man and Lazarus, he's in hell, he's saying, Father Abraham, and he called him son. Still his son. Father Abraham, son. He act like a jack, but look at the father. Didn't answer, I know my way to be called my son, make me what I have in servant. He didn't answer. He didn't feed into that. And they get in his throat and tell him, no. All of us miss it. Some people miss it big times. And some miss it small time, but they miss. Look at verse 21. And, and the son said unto his father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight I have no more way to be called thy son. But the father said unto his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and put shoes on his feet. He came back bare feet. <laughs> Everything is gone. Ah, uh, bring, bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Begin to make merry. Can you see that? We have to read some of those verses again. You have to read some of those verses again. I have to read some of those verses again. That's the behavior. All is gone. Nobody's giving you anything. Spend everything when you have. Everybody's your friend. Money finished. Friends gone. There's a mighty farm in the land. He had that much money. He's keeping the entire community going. Can you see that? Look at this. Go back up to verse 19. No, let's go back to verse 17. And when he come to himself. <laughs> when he come to himself. Well, those of you stronger than playing the playing games with drugs, you have to come to yourself. You have to, you have to want to be. See, God is not going to force deliverance on you if you don't want it. Your mother wants you to be fair. Your father wants you and you're doing it for your wife. Oh, that ain't going to work. We have had that in our ministry. You have to want it. You have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. You have to want it. When he come to himself. When he come to himself. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father and have... A bread enough to eat and to spare, I'm hunger. And I will arise and go to my father's house. I'll go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son, and make me one of thy hand servants. You see, notice he talking to himself. There's nobody there with him, he talking to himself. He didn't see the father, he's saying this, I'll come to myself, I'll go to my father's house, and I will say, when I get there, I will say to my father, no one to call thy son, and make me one of thy servant. And he's talking to himself. You have to talk to yourself. Because what 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 what's, what's the what's the spiritual law there? You'll get whatever you say. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast in the sea, and not doubt in his heart, but believe the things which he say shall come to pass. You'll have whatever he say. The woman reduced her blood. She says she's talking to herself. She says, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. She's talking to herself. You have to use words. You have to use words, and words have life trait. Your words have life and they have direction. They're going to accomplish what you set out to accomplish. He's talking himself. Look at that again. Wonderful facet of revelation. Say it. I'll be no more unemployed. I'm going to reconcile my wife. I'm going to get my turn back in my life. I'm going to get a job. You have to say it. And do it. Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. Well, you, you could write your own ticket. He's writing his own ticket. Look at it. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have and bread enough to spare? And I am going to have them. I will arise and go to my father's and I will say unto he's talking to himself and I'll say unto my father, I have sinned before heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son, make me whatever has but he, he rehearsed what he's gonna to say to his father. And and I'm no more worthy to be called his son, make me on the hand. And he arose. Now he's going to meet the father. And he arose, he rehearsed what he's gonna say. And he arose and came to his father. When he was yet a good way off, the father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, I have sinned again. He, re he repeated what he said before. You see, he's talking to himself. In your quiet time in your bedroom, you're talking to yourself. I'm going to get married. I'm going to have a family. I'm going to stick and tired of this living like this. I'm going to get out of this. I, and you say it. You say it. Talk it. I'm going to come to pass. Can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Galatians. Let's go back there. Hallelujah. Galatians. Chapter 6.
Hallelujah. Wonderful fastest are ever. If you would listen, get something to write with and something to write on. If you would listen, Galatians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Look at verse 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that also shall he reap. Look at the 8th verse. He that sow to the flesh, he that sow to the flesh, notice somebody have to sow. He that sow to the flesh, he that sow to the flesh, what are you going to get? He that sow to the flesh shall reap corruption, but he that sow to the spirit shall reap life everlasting. So you see somebody have to sow. What you're sowing? Whatever you sow, that's what you're God is not mocked. Child is an alcoholic or drug addict or whatever it is, a gambler or whatever it is, a womanizer. Somebody sow it. Every seed is going to produce after its own kind. Every seed is going to produce after its own kind. If you plant apples, you're going to get apples. Plant oranges, you're going to get oranges. Whatever you plant, you're going to, that's what you're going to reap. Somebody plant. Look at it. Be, God, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sow it, that shall you also reap. How did these children become drug addicts? Well, I don't know. They just... No, no, no. That's not true. Ah, somewhere in this it happened in there. Somebody's using alcohol. Somebody's using drugs. Ah, huh? look at it. He that sowed of the flesh shall reap corruption. That's what you sow. That's what you're going to reap. Ah, huh? he that sowed of the flesh shall reap corruption, but he that sowed it to the spirit, with a big S, shall reap everlasting life. Look at what they sowed to the flesh. Let's look at we look at this a while ago in Galatians. Go over to Galatians five. Just go over one chapter over. He that sowed to the flesh. He that sowed to the flesh going to reap. Look at look at what they sowed to the flesh. We read this a while ago, but look at it. Look at it in this context. Look at it. He that sowed to the flesh going to reap corruption. This is what you sow. You sow this. This is what you're going to get. This is the way you are. This is where your kids going to be at. Huh? Look at it. He that sowed to the flesh. Look at the flesh. The work of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Idolatry, adultery, adultery. If you like that, your trend will be just like that. Huh? As I say back home, dog don't make cat. Adultery, fornication, living house of people are married, you, you, you're not a good example, so what are you going to tell them? Huh? So into the flesh. Uncleanness, what is uncleanness? Not washing your hand, not taking a bath, no. Uncleanness, this uncleanness here is men with men and women with women. A lasciviousness, pornography and that kind of stuff. Our natural desire for this kind of stuff, lasciviousness, idolatry. Yes, whatever you saw, you saw it in the flesh, that's when you kill the kids. And I've known people like that, their grandparents involved in witchcraft, their children involved, and their grandchildren involved in it. Whatever you saw, you reap. Huh? Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, mean, Every something is wrong with everybody else and they pass on the turn and they're seeing everything wrong with everybody. Couldn't see nothing good. Always see the glass half empty and can't see it half full. Variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition. You know those strife masters? Heresy, envying, murder, drunkenness, reveling, party people. Ah, from one party to the next party, that's what you pass on them. That's what they're going to do. So into the flesh. Such a like which I tell you before he will do such thing uh, so not things should not inherit the kingdom of God. If you do these things, you'll not inherit the kingdom of God. You want to inherit the kingdom of God? Don't do these things. He that sowed to the flesh, going to reap corruption. He that sowed to the spirit, going to reap everlasting life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen, amen, and amen. Look at something here in Exodus before we come to this part of it. Exodus, you have to write all these things down. Write these things down. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. What are you sowing? you living like a child of the devil and you want your children to live right. You're drinking, getting drunk, but you tell them don't drink. you smoking, chain smoker, one cigarette behind and that. See all the destruction that's causing your health, but you tell them don't smoke. Well, stop smoking. You have to be an example. Children do more what they see you do than what you tell them to do. Let me say that again. Children do more what they see you do than what you tell them to do. Amen. Look at Exodus chapter 20. And let's pick it up at verse 1. Hallelujah. They inherit these things. They're in your system. 
Exodus chapter 20, God speak all these words saying, verse 1, I am the Lord God that brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. I'll have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image of any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is the earth beneath, or that is the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to serve them. For I am the Lord, I am a jealous God, visiting iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that and showing mercies on the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Can you see that? I say, can't you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Look at Jesus Christ. There's a solution to all this. Jesus is the answer to all of it. I'll be remiss if I didn't talk about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 4. He is the answer. We have had every, you name it, the substance of choice of these people, and God was able to beat every one of them. God Almighty. You name the drugs, we had it in the ministry. And God, I say this, let me put this postscript to it, that medicine is not going to do any good until you take it. If you don't take it, it's not going to work. And God is not going to force salvation down your throat. He's not going to force deliverance down your throat if you don't want it. It's you. Matthew chapter 4, look at Jesus when he started his public ministry. And look at the 23rd verse. Look at the 23rd verse. Matthew chapter 4, look at verse 23. And Jesus went all about Galilee, teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So whatever it had, because the Bible said that which was is that which is, that which shall be done is that which is done. There's nothing new on this one. They had the same mess back then. Well, we saw that way back up there with Noah in the sixth chapter. He get drunk and take out all his clothes. So we saw that with Lot and his daughters. We saw that. So that ain't nothing new under the sun. May call it a different name, but it's the same devil. Uh, verse 24, and his fame went throughout all Syria and the brought on them all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torment those that were possessed with devils, those that were lunatic, and those that were palsy, and he healed them, and his, there was following him great multitude of people from Galilee, from the Capolis, from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan, all over. But notice every manner of sickness, and every manner of disease, nothing past Jesus Christ. Everything he got, every one of them. Look at that again. Jesus went all about God, teaching the synagogue, and preaching the gospel, became healing all manner of sickness, and all manner of disease. So it's not a single person, you have any B-I-B-L-E, not a single person came to Jesus with anything and they went back and said, well, no, we're not doing that today. We're not doing blind or deaf or dumb people. We're not doing drug addicts today. We're not doing that today. We have to come back on Wednesday. We're doing that on Wednesday. Uh-uh. Every single person. Look at it. Look at it. And he went all about Galilee. Well, there are sick people in Galilee. That drug addict in Galilee. People addicted to all sorts of stuff. Is that which was? Is that which is? That which shall be done is that there nothing new under the sun. Teaching in synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought on them all sick people. So anybody had a child with addicted to anything, bring them to bring on. His fame went throughout all Syria and they brought on all sick people and were taken with diverse disease and torment, those that were possessed with devils, those that were lunatic, and those that were palsy and he healed them. And they follow him great multitudes. But don't you think those great multitudes are sick people? Huh? Great multitude. Didn't you think they had drug addict among them? Whatever the drugs was. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is the answer to any sickness or any disease. Look at Matthew 10. Matthew chapter 10. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 10. He called his 12 disciples and look what he gave them. Well, for you to give it to them, you have to have it. You couldn't give somebody something you don't have. Oh, uh -huh. hallelujah. Matthew chapter 10 and let's pick it about verse 1. And when he called unto his 12 disciples, he gave them power against so unclean spirit to cast them out to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the name of the twelve apostles these. First is Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus, Lebius, who was surnamed Tidius, and Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve he sent forth, commanded them 
Say, go not in the way of the Gentiles, nor any seed of the Samaritan, enter you not. But go rather to the Lordship of the house of Israel, as you go preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. Notice who he gave the power to. And notice among the Jews, the lost, or the lost tribes of the children of Israel, they had sick people. They had drug addicts. Every manner of sickness to give them power to do it. Can you read? Uh, to heal all manner of sickness. Go into all, go into the way of the, look at verse 5. The twelve he sent forth, command them, say, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, nor any city of the Samaritan, and do you not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, preach. Say, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the leper. Raise the dead. Cast out devil. Freely have received. Freely give. Look at this story here with Jesus in Matthew 15. Look at this. Matthew chapter 15. Hallelujah. 40 minutes after the second hour, get something to write with and something to write on. Behind the drug scene. Matthew chapter 15. Look at this. I pray that every one of you would take this scripture down. Not because I say that, because it's in the B.I.B. L.E. And hear what it's saying to us. Look at Matthew 15, look at the 29 verse. And Jesus departed then and came near to the Sea of Galilee and went up in the mountain and sat down. And great multitudes came out of heaven with them, those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others. Well, inside of that, many others, there was drug, drug addicts. Whatever it is, were many others. Whatever you whatever you missing, put it in there. Many others. Look at it. Many others. And they cast them down at Jesus' feet. And he healed them. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb speak, the maimed made whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. So whatever they had, they bring it to Jesus. You notice nobody went back home unattended. Everybody get this healing or the deliverance. Can you see that? We have to read those verses again. I said we have to read those verses again. Look at it. Look at verse 29. I notice something else. It's this little facet of revelation to tuck inside of there. Notice they came to Jesus. The woman with the issue of blood. You notice she went where Jesus was a great man to untouch his garment. You notice that the man in the pool of Bethesda, he went there. Bethesda means house of mercy. He went there. You see that? The blind man have to go and wash in the pool and do something. Naaman have to leave all the way to Syria and come. You notice that? They come. He got on the mountain. You always said to yourself, well, why? Jesus, why you have to go up the mountain? Why didn't you stay down on the level? Why didn't you sit down on the flat? I mean, make it easy for the people. All those old people, all those senior sis, make it easy for them. Just come down and stay on the low level. Uh-uh. Come up the mountain. Look at it. Jesus departed from there and came near onto the Sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down. There's a difference between a hill, a high hill, and a mountain. Ah, uh, he went up a mountain, and great multitudes came out to him, having with them those that were lame. They couldn't walk, so somebody had to take them up the mountain. Ah, uh, blind, they couldn't see. Somebody had to lead them up the mountain. Ah, uh, dumb, maimed, a maimed person, a person missing limbs. Ah, uh, and many others. And many others. And many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. And he healed them. Cast them down at Jesus' feet. And he healed them. Notice not a single person went back not being healed or delivered. Can you read? In so much that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb speak, the maimed made whole, the lame to walk, and the blind see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Acts 10. Is anything too hard for God? God could do it. I've never seen a person come, had a problem, who want to be set free, didn't get deliverance. Hallelujah. Acts 10. Acts chapter 10. Look at the 38 verse. I don't care what it is your son or your daughter have. God is the answer. Jesus is the answer. I've seen that. I'm a witness to that. Acts 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing some people. 
healing some people. Ah, huh? how God anointed him. Notice, he anointed, he gave them power. But notice, God gave it to Jesus. Ah, huh? you start with the Father God, Jesus, the third person of the Godhead, then the angels, down to the ministry gift, then down to the folks. Can you see that, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good? Well, if God is a good God, he's going to do good. So healing is good. Deliverance is good. If you're not healed, that's bad. Oppress of the devil, for God was with him. Uh, can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Look at Peter and the apostles in there. Look at something here in Acts chapter 5. Look at something. Watch this. If Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, if he did it back then, then he could do it today, or then he changed. But Malachi 3 and verse 6, I am the Lord that change it not. He never changes. Huh? He never changes. Acts chapter 5, and look at this with Peter and they. Now he going back to be at the right hand of the Father, and he left it here with them. He said, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. He leave earth to us, and he take heaven. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Look at this here. This, this marvel me. Acts chapter 5. Let's pick it up by the 12 verse. Acts chapter 5. Look at the 12 verse. By the hand of the apostles was many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they all were of one accord in Solomon porch. And the rest does no man join himself to them. But the people magnified him. And believers were more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick in the street and they laid them on bed and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. And they came, on, they came also multitude out of the cities surrounded about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them that were vexed with unclean spirit, and they that were healed, every one. Oh, Jesus gone back, he's not here. But look at all these people bring all the sick love from the cities. Let me go to read that again. Not city, but cities. Cities, plural. So whatever they had, anybody that you have sick or have a problem, a drug addict misbehave and we see the behavior of some of the drug or how they behave, take them to Jesus. No, they're not here, they're the apostles here. Look, let's read that again. Let's read that again. Look at verse 12. Look at verse 12. And by the hand of the apostle were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest of the, the rest uh, does no man join himself to them, but the people magnify them. And believers were more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the street and laid them upon bed and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing might overshadow some of them. These people got a lot of nerves. They had been the loved one, put him on a bed or couch, and his shadow just going down the street. People get healed. Look at verse 16. And there came also a multitude out of the cities. So they bring them from all different cities. They bring them from the Bronx and Staten Island and Manhattan and Queens and bring them into Brooklyn. The cities. Uh, from round about to Jerusalem, bringing the sick folks with them and those that were vexed with unclean spirit and they were healed. Every one. You know, these, these people are something else. Nobody think about because somebody missing a limb or is high or deaf or they're blind or they're dumb or something. They think, well, I don't know if they're going to get it. They say everyone will bring from all the cities around about everybody got it. You see, deliverance is there and Jesus is the answer. Hallelujah. The book of Philippians. Let's try to wind down with this. The book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2. Hallelujah. We could read some of these things if we believe them. To him that believe it, all things are possible. To him that believe it. He that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Philippians chapter 2, look at verse 9. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. So it's above drug addiction, above poverty, above loneliness. Above AIDS, whatever it is, above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow, things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. He gave him a name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus. He gave him the spirit of divination in the name of Jesus. 
at the gate beautiful in the name of Jesus, to get saved in the name of Jesus, to cast away the devil in the name of Jesus, to baptize in water in the name of Jesus, to be filled with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Everything is in the name of Jesus. 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 Look at those verses one more time. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Things in heaven, things on earth. Three worlds have to bow to that name. Three worlds have to bow to that name. Jesus is something else. He got that name three ways. By bestowal, by conquest, and by inheritance. He inherited it. He defeat principality and power to get it. And they bestow it upon him. So three ways he get it. Bestowal, inheritance, and by conquest. Jesus. 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 Let's try to close with this. Colossians chapter 1. Trying to close. They're looking for a place to learn. Colossians chapter 1. And see what God is saying to us. Colossians chapter 1. Hallelujah. There's an answer. Jesus is the answer. There's an answer. Jesus is the answer. Colossians chapter 1. Look at the 13 verse. Colossians chapter 1. Look at the 13 verse. Colossians chapter 1, look at verse 13. Colossians chapter 1, look at verse 13. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us in the kingdom of his dear son. So we are delivered. We are delivered. We're not going to be delivered. We are delivered. Who had? Look at that word, that archaic word, hat. We are delivered. You see, God see you already delivered. Now you have to walk in that deliverance. Mm -hmm. Who had delivered us? Who had delivered us? Mm -hmm. From the power of darkness, from Satan kingdom. Satan kingdom is the one who has the drug addiction and all these things. We don't have that on our side. We got freedom. Mm -hmm. He has bondage. Yeah. We, we have life. He has debt. Exactly. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. And, and you mean, in this, I mean, you know, in the scripture in Colossians chapter 1, verse, thing, verse 13, it tells us, that he had delivered us already, you know. So it, it's no need for us to be going back to doing these kind of things that we're not supposed to be doing. You know, and I'm so glad you read that scripture about the wine because, you know, it's no place where it said Jesus drank wine. It said he made it. And back then the wine was different than today because when you drink the wine today or when you use, and you know what else is something that most people don't look at? Even when you go to the drugstore, and you buy these over-the-counter drugs and they have you know stuff to put you to sleep and all of that. that that's a drug that and you know and when you start to look at it it's like wow why am I using that because what it does if you don't know it, it stirs up something because why you have that same kind of feeling you understand so you have to be so mindful with those kind of things also well, some the wine, they had the wine, the wine, some of the wine that they talk about, they have the alcohol content. Yes. But it has some wine that it has no alcohol content. Like, you know, the wine that you may say, this is good wine. Yes. It couldn't get you drunk. It's good wine. Then Paul said to his son Timothy in the faith, drink a little wine for that often stomach infirmity. They use it as for medicinal purposes. You see, don't drink no water, drink a little wine for that often stomach infirmity. So there's different. Let's look at it. when you use the word wine, as I said before, sometimes the language could be a very poor language to convey God taught. Mm -hmm. You know, the Hebrew language sometimes has so much meaning to one word. And you could take that word and say, well, it's wine, it's wine, it's wine. No, it's different. You know, but sometimes the word to convey it from that to bring it over to English, sometimes there's not corresponding words to explain there's a difference in this and that, wine and strong drinks and vinegar. And different than that. Maybe we next segment we try to look at that and see how they put that together. Amen. Amen. We want to give those that are viewing an opportunity or listening an opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. The Bible says, not my wish that any should perish. It doesn't want anybody going to hell. Hell was not made for you, but for the devil and his angels, you don't have to go to hell. All you have to do is to say yes. Fall out any form, quit your job, leave your husband and wife, abandon your kids, give up your apartment, fall out a form, bring some money, join the church. All you have to say is say yes. Saying yes, you leave the kingdom of darkness and move to the kingdom of light. 
If you're already saved, we want you to stand proxy for somebody who's not saved. But if you're not saved, then stand for yourself. Repeat these words that mean from the bottom of your heart. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. You said in your holy word. You said in your holy word. Who should ever come to me? Who should ever come to me? I'll in no way cast out. I will no way cast out. But I'll take them in. But I'll take them in. So I come to you. So I come to you. You didn't cast me out. You didn't cast me out. But you took me in. But you took me in. And I thank you. And I thank you. Romans 10. Romans 10. Verse 13. Verse 13. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord. Who should ever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved shall be saved so I call upon your name so I call upon your name so I'm now saved so I'm now saved Romans 10 Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 verses 9 and 10 with the mouth confession is made unto salvation with the mouth confession is made unto salvation but with the heart man believe it unto righteousness but with the heart man believe it unto righteousness so I confess with my mouth so I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus the Lord Jesus that he died that he died went to hell went to hell spent three days spent three days and three nights and three nights just for me just for me because I confess that with my mouth. Because I confess that with my mouth. And I believe that in my heart. And I believe that in my heart. I'm now saved. I'm now saved. I now become. I now become the righteousness. The righteousness of God. Of God in Christ. In Christ. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Five twenty one. Five twenty one. Jesus. Jesus, you represent me in heaven. You represent me in heaven, and I will. And I will represent you on earth. Represent you on earth. Jesus, Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for what you did for me. For what you did for me on Calvary. On Calvary, shedding your blood. Shedding your blood to redeem me. To redeem me from the curse of the law. From the curse of the law. Spiritual death. Spiritual death. Poverty. Poverty and sickness. And sickness. Satan. Satan. You no longer my lord. You no longer my lord. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is my lord. Is my lord and my savior. And my savior. I live for him. I live for him. I'll serve him. I'll serve him. I'll study his words. I'll study his words. I'll be a good example. I'll be a good example. For all to see. For all to see. And I thank you. And I thank you. In your name I pray. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. In the name and of amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible said there's rejoicing in heaven when sinners and earth receive Christ. When you receive Christ, you have to get busy. Because Christianity is not passive but active. The Bible said when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he's walking through dry places, seeking rest and find and he's coming back. Come back and find the house empty, sweep and garnish. He's going to get seven more spirit, more wicked himself. Come back to dwell in your last as words and your first. You got to get busy. Start reading. Start with the gospel according to John. Start reading that in the morning. You read the first chapter again. Read at lunch time and at bedtime. Tomorrow you read chapter two. Then you start reading. The Spirit of God is going to lead you other places as you get developing things of God. But do that. Ask God to lead you to a church that will feed you spiritually. Don't go to a church because your friends are going there because there's a church down the rock or across the street where you live. Ask him to lead you. When he leads you, they submit to that authority. Be a blessing to them and God is going to bless you. Don't curse the dark but light a candle. And God is going to bless you. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time that you have given us. Thank you for the opportunities and privileges. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, to yes, make all Lord. this possible. Thank you, Lord, for thank Jesus, you, victorious and triumphant Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you for the victory in Jesus. Yes, Lord. Victory none other. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory Hallelujah. because all belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And, and amen. Good night. You have been listening to Pastor Randolph Ferdinand, Teachings from the Word. To get a copy of this teaching or any of the other series, call 347-533-4271. 347-533-4271. Like us on Facebook or YouTube at H2C3 Ministry. H2C3 Ministry. Go for the word. Day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with His promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, Make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with Him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him, 
He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you already know this, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawless men and fall from your secure position. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Peter. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Apostle Peter wrote what you are about to hear while he was in Rome in A.D. 63 or 64. Affection running ahead. I 